how to do better. As I said, we've learned to avoid some of the uh, earlier pitfalls that I think people entered into uh, out of the best of intentions. You know, wanting to get the right, their, their, their goal to get the right answer often led them to do things that would increase the, the risk of their getting a wrong answer. And so we've learned about those kinds of things. We've learned about not throwing people out of an analysis. Uh, we've learned about um, trying to follow up people and, and that it's a big problem if you have a lot of missing data. We've, um, we've developed methods to try and analyze studies even when you do have some missing data to try and see how those missing data might have affected the results and how far off you might be. Um, we've learned, as I said before, about uh, uh, study designs for monitoring uh, and um, and and how we oversee uh, how we oversee studies, what uh, data monitoring committee will look at. Um, uh, we have a whole new era now of um, adaptive designs. Uh, now, clinical trials have always, by necessity, been adaptive. Uh, in that, you know, you have to you have to watch what's happening. If you see some unusual safety issue emerging, you have to be prepared to do something about it. You might have to, um, you might have to reduce doses, you might have to uh, drop a, a, a one of this arm, one of the treatments that you're studying, you might have to stop the study altogether. So it, there's, they're always been adaptive in that sense. And then the, the sequential designs that said, we're going to look at our data, you know, every six months, and if we get to this point, if we cross this boundary, then we'll stop a trial. That's an adaptive design. Um, Early on, probably back in the 80s, people started developing um, uh, other types of um, other types of uh, adaptive designs in which you would change the uh, ratio of those assigned to one treatment versus the other treatment according to how the data were emerging. So, so that a pick the winner. Uh, yes, it, it, and, and actually, I should say the play the winner rule was also developed by Marvin Zellin. I mean, Marvin Zellin has really been an extremely creative uh, statistician when it comes to clinical trial design. So he developed the play the winner rule, and that got um, many modifications developed in that. But but uh, one one of them was basically a uh, a, a design called a response adaptive design, where as the data, you know, sort of emerge, you start saying, all right, well now instead of one to one, it's going to be one and a half to one, or two to one, or three to one. Now those designs, while they 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 have a certain appeal, uh, right? Because you can show that at the end of those studies, which on average are going to be a little bit bigger probably than, than other studies, but you're going to have many more people be getting the superior treatment by the end of the study. I, I think there are many, though, who feel a little bit uncomfortable about the idea that, you know, you're, 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 you've designed in the study to figure out which is looking better, but you're still assigning some treatments, some, some of the treatments that look worse to some of the people. So, you know, if you're, if you're, almost sure that treatment A is better than that you have still assigning one out of four people to the worst, you know, that's, there, there was something that, that, that made a lot of people um, feel uncomfortable. And the people who promote those designs will say, what's the difference between that and if you keep it one to one all the way along and, and the last person into that study, and may, maybe it's, you know, it's pretty clear by then. And um, it, it this is a this is a this is a hard thing to to adjudicate. I think most of us who um, who are used to the standard designs think of the, the the progress of a clinical trial as one where we say we don't know anything at the beginning, and we say we do not know anything until the end when the results are released. So basically, our knowledge is zero 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 all along. So we don't so much have a problem with who's being randomized to what. Right toward the end because our knowledge is still zero. We do have this data monitoring committee up here watching to make sure things don't get totally out of hand, but until we know, we don't know. So it's zero and then it goes up to one at right. the time. Whereas the other one, you are saying that you know something by the design as it goes along. You know enough that you're doing two to one. You know enough that you're doing three to one. So practically, um, does it make a difference? You know, I don't know, but it, it, it's that, that's one reason I think that these designs have not become more popular. But the new version of adaptive designs are different. 
Uh, they're intended to, um, uh, in the earlier phase of studies, they're intended to allow for a lot of variability in which doses you're studying or even which combinations of treatments you're studying um, or even which populations you're studying and, and to be able to shift things so that you, uh, the theory is that you will be able to make a decision about which treatments to move forward with faster and you will get rid of treatments that look like they're not going to be effective sooner. Um, we've had a speaker at this, um, at this meeting yesterday, Don Barry, who's been in the forefront of, uh, of this kind of a design. Uh, and I don't think there's too much controversy about those designs, although I'm not sure everybody's convinced that you really do get the right answer faster. But, um, uh, but there's a lot of people uh, using these designs now. Uh, there are other kinds of adaptive designs that are intended to allow a study to enlarge uh, if if uh, you get part way through and it looks as though this may work but not quite as well as you thought in the beginning and the study you designed wasn't big enough and so you make the study you make the study bigger and um, so there there are a lot of a, a lot of different types of adaptive designs that's sort of what's the what's new in clinical trials people looking at these designs to see whether they're going to help us get to the right answer faster <laughs>